You may think you know the truth about the Nazca mummies, but new results are in, and the story is far from over. The DNA we extracted does not match any modern human. There's a story locked away in the DNA of the Nazca mummies, and some people don't want it to be told. These creatures, with their three fingers and strange bodies, were recently analyzed by scientists who managed to sequence their entire genome. The title of this piece promises a revelation about their DNA being nothing like human, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. If it's human, if it's non-human, like I said, our whole mission is just pure curiosity. What could it be? What they discovered is so controversial that it threatens to upend mainstream science. But you see, it's not just that the DNA is different. The way it's different points to a forgotten chapter of life on Earth. When the Earth gave up its aliens. In the bone-dry expanse of the Nazca Desert in Peru, a place famous for giant figures carved into the earth, a discovery was made in 2015 that was, to put it mildly, explosive. A tomb raider known locally as a Huacero stumbled upon a hidden cave. Inside, preserved by the dry climate and a special white powder known as diatomaceous earth, were several bizarre bodies. These weren't your typical ancient mummies. These figures had elongated skulls, almost like something out of a science fiction movie. Even stranger, they had only three extremely long fingers on each hand and three long toes on each foot. They were small, most around five and a half feet tall, and their skin had a grayish, chalky appearance. Many people are crazy about these kinds of mysteries, and this one was a doozy. The main specimen, a female mummy later named Maria, seemed to be the most complete. Scans would later show what appeared to be eggs or fetuses inside her, suggesting she was once a living, breathing creature capable of reproduction. The most shocking fact is that these bodies were carbon dated to be around 1,700 years old. Word of the discovery spread like wildfire, eventually reaching Jamie Mason, a Mexican journalist famous for his interest in UFOs and unexplained phenomena. By 2017, the story went global. Mosan and his team of researchers, including Dr. Jose de Jesus Salta Benitez from the Mexican Navy's Health Sciences Institute, brought the findings to the world's attention. The climax of this public campaign came in September 2023, when Mosan presented two of these small bodies in glass cases before Mexico's Congress. He declared under oath that these were non-human beings that are not part of our terrestrial evolution. The world watched, stunned. Was this it? The proof of alien life that so many had been waiting for? What many overlooked is that the real evidence wasn't just in their strange appearance, but in what was hidden deep inside their cells. The claim was simple and terrifying. Their biology was fundamentally different from our own. The story of their bones and skin was strange enough, but the story their genes told was about to get much, much stranger. The thing nobody tells you is the sheer detail of the initial findings. The bodies had no hair and no external ears, only ear holes. Their bones were lighter than human bones, but also stronger. Their joints were built differently, allowing for a range of motion unlike anything seen in primates. One of the smaller bodies, nicknamed Wawita, was curled in a fetal position and was only about two feet long. It looked eerily like the classic gray alien from popular culture. For believers, this was a smoking gun. For skeptics, it was all too convenient, looking like a carefully constructed prop. But Mossen and his team had x-rays, CT scans, and DNA samples. They were ready to prove to the world that these weren't fakes. They were biological specimens of an unknown species, and they had the science to back it up. The stage was set for a scientific showdown that would pit mainstream archaeology against a small group of researchers holding what they believed was evidence that could change the world forever. They were no longer just strange bodies found in a cave. They were a direct challenge to the human story. But the real shock came when they looked inside their DNA. The 30% Mystery when the first DNA samples from the mummy Maria were put through a sequencing machine, the results that came back were mind-boggling. On one hand, the DNA was familiar. You see, it had 23 pairs of chromosomes, just like a human. But that's where the similarities ended abruptly. According to the initial reports from researchers associated with Mousen, a staggering 30% of the DNA was of unknown origin. It didn't match any known species on Earth. This was the bombshell. 
If this was true, Maria wasn't just a human with a birth defect, she was something else entirely. Dr. Konstantin Karatkov, a Russian researcher who was part of the early analysis, stated that while the number of chromosomes was the same, the shape of the position of all the chromosomes of all the amino acids does not coincide with ours. This implies that the very building blocks of their life were assembled in a different way. It's like having a book with the right number of pages, but a third of the words are in a language nobody has ever seen before. The details kept getting stranger. The team claimed that Maria's genetic makeup was 99% primate, which sounds normal, but that 1% difference is a massive gulf in genetics. For perspective, humans and chimpanzees share about 98.8% of their DNA. That 1% could represent millions of years of separate evolution, or it could point to an origin that isn't terrestrial at all. Furthermore, the team performed a detailed analysis on the mummy's hands. The fingerprints didn't have the familiar loops, whirls, and arches of human fingerprints. Instead, they were composed of simple, straight lines running across the pads, a pattern never before documented. What many overlooked were the physical oddities that the DNA seemed to support. The CT scans presented by Dr. Zalsi showed that the bones were not pieced together. They were a single, coherent skeleton. The three-fingered hands were not a mutation like ectrodactyly, a condition that causes a split in the hands or feet because the bone structure was completely different and uniform across all the specimens. The most shocking fact is what they found beneath the skin. In the chest and abdomen of some of the mummies, CT scans revealed small metallic implants. These implants were about two millimeters wide and were made of osmium, a rare, dense metal. No ancient culture on Earth had the technology to work with osmium in this way. This added a whole new layer to the mystery. Were these tracking devices, biological monitors? The questions piled up. Were these beings genetically engineered? Were they a hybrid species? The 30% unknown DNA seemed to hold the key. This wasn't just a case of a few weird bones, it was a cascade of unexplainable biological and technological evidence. And you can see this everywhere in the reports. Each new test brought more questions than answers. The initial DNA results combined with the physical evidence painted a picture of a creature that was biologically sophisticated but profoundly, fundamentally different from humans but not everyone was buying this incredible story. The hoax of the century? As soon as the sensational claims about the Nazca mummies hit the news, the mainstream scientific community responded with a collective eye roll. To them, this wasn't a groundbreaking discovery. It was a circus. The Peruvian government itself was the first to cry foul. The Ministry of Culture declared the mummies an elaborate fraud, likely created by tomb raiders to sell on the black market. They argued that Mawson and his team had illegally taken historical artifacts, or worse, fake artifacts, out of the country. This kicked off a massive debate, and established archaeologists and geneticists began picking apart the evidence piece by piece. The thing nobody tells you is how easy it is to be fooled by a well-made fake, especially when you want to believe. The world's top mummy experts largely agreed that the bodies were Frankensteins, patched together from a mix of human and animal parts. In January 2024, this theory gained a huge boost. Authorities at the Lima Airport in Peru seized a package bound for Mexico. Inside were two small tridactyl mummies, similar to the ones Mawson had displayed. Peruvian experts conducted a press conference to reveal their findings. The verdict was damning. Flavio Estrada, an archeologist with Peru's Institute of Legal Medicine, called them dolls, he showed x-rays revealing that the bodies were constructed from a bizarre mix of animal and human bones, all held together with modern synthetic glue. The heads, he said, were likely made from llama or alpaca skulls, and the skin was a clever mixture of paper and adhesive. The theories of alien origins are totally false, he stated flatly. For the skeptics, this was case closed. Mossan's mummies were nothing more than ghoulish arts and crafts projects. The DNA evidence was also put under the microscope. Independent geneticists argued that the 30% unknown DNA was a classic sign of contamination. When you're testing ancient samples, they are often swarming with DNA from bacteria, fungi, and even the people who have handled them over the years. Sophisticated techniques are needed to filter out all this noise. 
The critics claim Mawson's team either didn't do this properly or deliberately misinterpreted the contaminated data to fit their narrative. They argued that the human portion of the DNA was likely from real, looted human mummies, which were then desecrated and modified to look like aliens. The most shocking fact is that this has happened before. People have been faking artifacts for centuries, from the Piltdown Man to Crystal Skulls. For many scientists, the Nazca mummies were just the latest chapter in this long history of deception. So is it a hoax? The evidence gets weirder. More than human, less than alien? While the hoax theory seems compelling, it doesn't answer everything. The researchers who have physically examined the main specimens, like Maria, insist they are not cobbled together. Dr. Zalke, a man with a serious medical and military background, has staked his reputation on the fact that the skeletons are anatomically correct and show no signs of being assembled. The CT scans he presented show joints, tendons, and blood vessels that appear genuine. So what if the truth is somewhere in the middle? What if these aren't aliens or fakes, but something else entirely, a lost branch of the human family tree? The thing nobody tells you is that our planet's history is filled with different types of humans, like Neanderthals and Denisovans who walked the Earth alongside our ancestors. Most of them went extinct. Could the Nazca beings be another one of these forgotten relatives? This idea, known as the ghost population theory, is gaining some traction. It suggests that a small, isolated group of early humans in South America developed unique genetic traits over thousands of years. Their three-fingered anatomy could be the result of a powerful genetic mutation, perhaps related to a gene called Gali-3, which is known to cause polydactyly, extra fingers, and ectrodactyly, split hands. Over generations of inbreeding, this trait could have become dominant within the tribe. The elongated skulls are also not unheard of. Ancient cultures all over the world, including the Paracas culture right there in Peru, practiced cranial deformation, binding infants' heads to create a cone shape. What many overlooked is that perhaps for this group, the shape was genetic, not artificial. This would make them a distinct species or subspecies of hominid, one that lived and perished in isolation. This theory also offers a compelling terrestrial explanation for the bizarre DNA results that have puzzled researchers. When we encounter genetic material that is familiar yet profoundly strange, our minds can leap to extraterrestrial origins. But what if the answer isn't in the stars, but buried deep in our own planet's past? If these individuals were part of a distinct, divergent hominid species, their DNA would naturally be very similar to our own, yet it would also contain significant unmappable sections, the so-called 30% unknown. This wouldn't be alien DNA, it would be ancient hominid DNA from a branch of our family tree that has long since withered. Our modern genetic databases are built upon the lineages that survived, leaving us blind to those that did not. We see this principle everywhere in the natural world. Evolution isn't a single linear march, it's a vast branching tree. Geographic isolation is a powerful engine for creating unique forms of life. Think of the extraordinary and unique animals that evolved on the Galapagos Islands or in the isolated ecosystems of Australia. Why should we assume the story of human evolution was any different? On a vast, unexplored continent thousands of years ago, why couldn't an isolated population of early humans diverge, developing unique genetic traits over countless generations, becoming a species unto themselves? This perspective transforms the archaeological evidence as well. The discovery of these beings buried together in a careful, ritualistic manner ceases to be a mystery of concealment. They weren't alien visitors being hidden away. Instead, we are likely witnessing a far more poignant and human scene. The last members of a forgotten people, a tribe at the end of its existence, being laid to rest with reverence by their own kind. It's a theory that replaces a sci-fi mystery with a profound anthropological elegy, reminding us that we were not always alone and that ghosts of our own forgotten relatives may lie waiting to be discovered. So, what are they? Hoaxes, aliens, or a lost human species? The debate rages on with evidence that is both compelling and contradictory. Are we alone or does our own planet still hide secrets about our past? Let us know what you believe in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe for more answers to the world's greatest mysteries.